G'day mate, welcome back to Factorio with me, Jetty. We've, we're pretty much exactly where we left off trying to automate uh, inserters, even though I've got a stack of them on me. We, 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 we're in a game where we need to automate everything. So, I need to get iron into this guy, gears into this guy, and I need to get green circuits into this guy. So, we're going to first off start by moving more gun turrets. Um, I guess the only bright side is each time I pull up a gun turret, I'm actually putting down more than I pulled up. Um, we're going to put in green circuits over here along with iron and gears and add some power. Um, now, rather than going down this time, I'm actually going to go across. And same story as before, I'm going to hook up a little bit of wire and I'm going to say, hey, you, if this has a hundred in it, um, you can run. I'm gonna go on with our next guy who also needs green circuits, which we conveniently have right here. And he needs gears, which again, we conveniently have right there. And he also needs iron. Now iron, I didn't really think about. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rip that up and I'm gonna bring it down one more tile and then I'm going to use some longhand inserts and you might say JD why didn't you automate those and my easy answer for that is if I have normal inserters on me there's a good chance that I have iron plate and gears or I can craft gears to make longhand inserts and generally you don't need lots of them you only need a few of them here there and everywhere so I generally go with handcrafting them. Now, that's not to say in the future, I won't pre-plan ahead to put a longhand inserter right there and have it direct feed across and this gear belt come out here and me put gears in. Um, that is a future plan, but for right now, we don't really need it. Uh, okay, longhand inserters. This one, I will copy those, paste those there change you to a fast inserter and it also means I can do this because I don't need quite that many in my inventory um, but fast inserters are something we're going to use more and more of um, as the base gets faster and faster this can be replaced with a ghost because it only needs a ghost for now and the whole point of your your make almost everything not it doesn't have to be fast it just has to be constant um, and that's really the guiding rule when it comes to um, these sorts of structures. They just have to tick over slightly, uh, silently in the background. Um, so the, also on the long list of things that we wanted automated was gun turrets. So I'm going to put down... Actually, I want gun turrets on this side. gun turrets and uh, actually we've got all the materials right there so we can do electric mining drills right there uh, again gears which are conveniently right here uh, And we can have you output to the side again. Uh, this one, I will hard cap to, they're stacking 50, so 200. 200 is probably more than enough. Um, let's get some lights down the side. Actually, I have real lights. Let's use some of these real lights that we've got laying around. Because um, they obviously produce a lot more light than what the, the power poles do. Uh, gun turrets. So gun turrets need lots of gears. Um, ideally, I'd like to make them in the middle where I could pull gears from both sides. But they also have a very, very long crafting time. So I don't actually need that higher gear production. Uh, are you going to have room to output that way? Good. Uh, so the other thing I need is I need copper. Now, I don't have any copper production currently. Uh, any any copper belts currently 
in our, our little make almost everything. So I'm obviously going to have to go get copper. So we're going to run our belt up. Now that we've got a, a make almost everything, making a tiny bit of everything. In theory, there's less handcrafting, but sometimes it's just easier to handcraft with what you've got laying around than it is to run back and go get stuff. But that should give us copper if I run down the belt because it's faster. That should be everything. Now, the reason I've used, I've used a fast inserter for the close belt. And then because we also need 20 copper cable, I've used long-handed inserters for the copper. Now, in the end, and this is something I actually normally do if I really want things to go as fast as possible. So I've already got the, the amount of copper I need but I don't have the amount of iron I need. So again, we'll just clear all these by holding control and clicking on each one of them. And I could now have all the iron I need, but not nearly enough. Oh no, actually that is enough copper. Okay, so that's the best combination of inserters to get this running flat out. So we're gonna leave it running in that combination. Now it means we've got gun turrets automated. Really, another one's dead? Okay. This spider base is really not happy with us. Uh, let's go pick up more walls on the way past. Uh, where is our wall production? Over here. Uh, there's 1.6K in the chest. That's probably overkill. Uh, it's always better to have too much than not enough. We'll run over here and we'll Replace some of our defenses. Repair some of our defenses. Um, probably should re automate repair packs as well. Gun turret, gun turret. Really? And this is when I run out of gun turrets just after? No. I've still got heaps of them. Okay. Uh, ammo, on the other hand. You, you, you. You, you, you. Ammo on the other hand, I am completely out. I'm running around naked. I have nothing. Uh, let's take a wall. And in this case, we're just going to put a hard wall right across the front. Uh, right the way out to the lake. Right the way back. And hopefully, that's enough to, to defend our gun turrets for the moment. It doesn't have to be neat, it just has to be solid. Because I guarantee whatever you build, you can end up picking up later, as has been proven half a dozen times already. Uh, that'll do. There's a forest in the way, I can't be bothered. Okay. So, ammo production, we did have automated, we now don't have automated, so I want to re automate that. Um, because of the way this is set up, for the moment, I, I'm, I'm literally just going to. Because this is a really temporary build, we're going to run out of those, so let's go pick some up. This is the whole point of a make almost everything. It will just make things slowly and continuously for you. Uh, put down power. We want you to make ammo, you to make ammo. Because the very, very next thing that we're going to go off and we're going to automate, now we have a, a, a little make almost everything is we're gonna do, oh, I have no ammo, that's right. Where'd I park my car? Dude, where's my car? Over here, um, cause it's got, it's full of ammo. The very next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna do military science. Um, because we have not quite everything automated. Um, I didn't get assembly machines done. I probably should have done those as well. Um, do we have room? Yeah, literally where I just built gun turrets is where they're meant to go. Um, all right, we'll come back and fix that later after I get military done. So military science being our third science pack needs wall, which we do have automated on the far side of the base. So we're going to have to do something about that. Um, there's a trail of biters coming in and yeah. Okay. They're good. Um, so we're going to need wall, which you already have automated. Grenades, which I automated very, very, very quickly. Um, 
for coal and iron plates. So we're going to have to get some coal onto the bus to feed into our grenade pr production. We also need armor piercing ammo, which takes copper, steel, which we do have built, not that we're doing anything with it, and normal firearm magazines. So we're going to start with the armor piercing ammo, which needs firearm magazines. And we produce one of these per second. The armor piercing ammo, we need one of these, but it, uh, one normal ammo, but it takes three seconds to make. So we straight away know that on a simple ratios, we can have a one to three. Um, in my case, I'm actually gonna go for two to six, okay? I want to have excess production of ammo because um, obviously we're going through it. Uh, the armor piercing ammo is a lot more expensive, but you can see it, we go from five plus one to eight plus 1.6. So it does a little bit more damage, which hopefully means we're using less of it, uh, but also kills biters a little bit more efficiently. So we need to bring iron in. That's easy. So let's start with just getting iron in. And for the moment, we're just gonna build across the bus and we'll fix it after the fact. Uh, as the bus extends through. So we need to get iron in. And power poles. Okay, so iron in, which is gonna give us ammo out. Uh, and in actual fact, I think we're gonna go with a few extra inserters because they do take four iron plate every one second. So we know from previous experience that the inserter is gonna put stuff on the far side of the belt. So on the inside of the belt, I could put another material. As we have to get one steel in and five copper plate, I'm actually gonna do copper over here on this side of the belt, uh, on this side of the assemblers. So I'm gonna take copper from wherever it is on the bus. Uh, good question, JD, right there. Uh, oops, copy that and just run it along. So I'm gonna take copper from here and bring it onto the bus at the same time. I now know exactly where that underground has to go. So I'm gonna bring copper in there for our um, armor piercing ammo. And then that means on this belt, on the inside of this belt, we're gonna do our steel. So again, two inserters, two inserters, two inserters. We can run this along. We just need to get steel into here. So steel is all the way up here. So, Going off our bus strategy, we want to leave a two-tile gap. And the reason we're leaving a two-tile gap is exactly this, so we can squeeze our undergrounds up and down all the way through the bus. So I want to leave a two-tile gap. I want to put steel right about there. And by holding shift and using the ghost key, I can sort of work out where things are going to line up. And then we can begin the process of running backward to put all the belt in place with probably every single gun turret in the way. And if it's not gonna be a gun turret, it'll be a bit of forest, I betcha. Uh, you and you will pick you up. Uh, yep, you've seen better days. So we are gonna have to do something about the biters. They are they're not really hurting us, they're just encroaching. Or to be more exact, the base is being built towards them. Um, that, and they are encroaching. So, yeah, future episode, we will have to do a combat episode, but I really wanna get military science up and running first because that lets us get bigger and better boomsticks and bigger and better boomsticks always make the natives die faster, which is always a bonus in my book. So that'll give us steel, which will get armor piercing ammo running. Uh, at the same time, we needed, we did need some coal. So we have our coal currently going into our furnace setup. And we can see right here, this is a dedicated coal line. So realistically, what I wanna do is I wanna take that coal 
and I want to get it onto the bus. And given our current bus situation, so we've got gears here, we could put coal right there somehow. At the same time, we, we, we decided we needed stone brick to make walls. So we also need to put stone bricks somewhere. So let's start with both of these at the same time. Let's just bring that up. We'll take that in there. So that gives us some stone brick to make walls. And as for our coal, believe it or not, I'm actually going to take it off right here. And now that we're a little bit richer on resources, I can be a little bit more reckless with the way I do things. Uh, think, JD, think. Because I want to turn... No, I can turn here instead. Okay, so you go there. I'm going to move all these power poles. Hard way of doing things, but I have a dedicated coal belt. I want to use a dedicated coal belt. And due to the way the smelt is set up, there isn't really a better way of getting things through... Through the bus. Uh, through the furnace array. Because um, honestly, you're not meant to go through your furnaces with anything. But... To be different, to be unique, because it works, we're going to run an underground belt a couple of tiles at a time to get it all the way through our furnace array uh, to bring it out there to get that one out of the way and that one out of the way and that one out of the way. And I just did things the exact wrong way. That's one underground compared to two undergrounds. So we have a coal belt, we're then going to take it along the bus. So these are going that way, so I want to go there, oops, there to there. Same with this one, oops, again, I reached too far. That goes that way. Bring this one along, bring that one along. We're going to have you underground as well this gun turret. It's in the middle of the base. It's, it's it's probably safe at this point. You can just get picked up. You're going to go that way. You're going to go that way. Another, yet another underground, uh, which will start there. I keep overreaching by one tile. Uh, I am definitely going to run out of undergrounds. Yeah. Let's go get more undergrounds in our make almost everything. Uh, you've only got 50 in you because that's what you've been capped to. And actually, I just noticed I've only got 93 belt. So let's go raid half that box. I do that by holding their control and right clicking on the box to just take half of it. Now, Generally, you go with whatever's cheapest when it comes to the undergrounds. Because this is two belts I'm running this way, and our green circuit has been built with potentially four belts coming out of it, I'm actually going to run these two belts across. Because that is the cheaper way to run things. Uh, again, same story. We're going to move things further through. Move you through. We're going to run this along. Uh, now, this one I can't really underground. Um, there we go, research is done. Uh, I didn't update again. So, we're going to... We're going to get lab research speed, purely because we can. We're going to get fluid wagons because we can. We're going to get solar panels because we can. We're going to get concrete because we can. And that's pretty much where our research ends until we get military science up and running, which I said, I really, it's what we're working on now. I really want to have done yesterday. Uh, so we're going to have to underground that one and underground that one. 
Um, same story with this. It's going to have to underground just because of where the splitters are. Uh, you can underground that way. 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 We're getting there. Okay, so that's our two belts. We've finally got them here. Now, we have our armor piercing ammo, but we're not outputting it. So let's have some output. Uh, so we have armor piercing ammo. Step one of military science complete. Step two. Uh, is grenades and grenades is a fairly easy build we're trying to build everything to a ratio of one so this takes eight seconds to make uh, actually we don't need to even build things to a ratio of one because um both military and chemical science packs output two per cycle we only actually have to build to half our ratio so rather than need a grenade we actually need half a grenade so we could just get away with four machines, but honestly, I want some spare grenades laying around um, because they're really, really good at taking out forests. Um, case in point, so much easier to throw a couple of grenades than it is to clear a forest and um, to cut down a forest and we're coming up on a forest. So I want eight of these machines and I have exactly two assemblers left. Five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I want these guys to output to the exact same belt as our uh, armor piercing ammo. And these guys, again, military grenades, have two inputs. They have five coal, uh, five iron plate, and ten coal. So, which is an awful lot of material to put on one mixed belt so instead we're going to run two belts i'm going to run a dedicated coal belt and a dedicated iron belt and we're just going to use long handed again i'll put those two there put those two there put that one there whoops run that belt along hey gun turret hey biter Power that up, power those two up, power those two up, power those two up. So we want coal on the first belt because we use more coal than we use iron, which is right there. And then we want iron on the outside belt, which is up here somewhere, right there. We're gonna bring that along, uh, underground our steel, put our splitter in right there, and voila we have some more iron. So, uh, I can do that, that, and that. And copy those across and fill in a bit more belt as we go. Nope, I can't fill in that much belt. But it looks like that's where I'm gonna have to end this episode. We've got military two thirds done and this gun turret's looking awfully damaged. Um, so yeah, we got military two thirds done. There's only one item left to make, um, which is the wall, which is literally one assembler making wall. It's really not that hard. Um, and then the actual military science assemblers themselves. But we now have on our little belts, we get, we have grenades and we have armor piercing ammo. So we're even better prepared to take out the bite of vermin in the next couple of episodes because... Um, yeah, they're right there. And these attacking parties are getting a little bit ridiculous, to be honest. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you're enjoying this little series. Um, and I really hope you come back tomorrow for some more Factory Island goodness on our little Death World. So, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Alright, bye!